Great to be with you, Peter Barlacy, a cardiologist. Now, a common condition in the community is that of type 2 diabetes. You or a loved one may have diabetes, and you might be on a class of medicine known as an SGLT2 inhibitor. Empaglyphosin, Vapaglyphosin, or Jardiance, or Forsega. Well, this class of medicine has also shown significant benefits in those who don't have diabetes. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now, this class of medicine known as the SGLT2 inhibitors, a particular protein that is found in our kidneys, and this medicine goes and blocks that particular protein, leading to increased glucose excretion in the urine. So you lose glucose, you lose essentially sugars in the urine when you take this medication. Therefore, your blood glucose or your blood sugar goes down. And that's where it's actually useful in those with diabetes. And many of you might be on those either in isolation, but more often combined with other medicines such as metformin or insulin. So this class of medicine has been studied over the last few years to benefit patients with congestive heart failure. And we've had a separate video on what congestive heart failure is and some of the key medications that are useful. Well, this particular class of medicine is extremely useful and we're finding it more relevant to many, many patients with congestive heart failure. Now, congestive heart failure, in essence, can occur from two major problems that affect the heart. One is where the heart muscle itself is not pumping appropriately, it's, it's weaker, and that is when the heart function is reduced, and when the heart becomes weaker, it's not able to pump all the, the blood out as it should. And that blood and that fluid accumulates in our body. We get swelling in our ankles. We get fluid building up in our lungs. We get very short of breath. Our weight goes up very, very quickly. And it leads to this congestion where we have to seek urgent treatment. There is also another condition that causes heart failure where the heart muscle is actually pumping quite normally, but it's not relaxing appropriately. And that is heart failure with what we call preserved heart function or ejection fraction. And that is a very commonly seen condition, most often seen in patients who have high blood pressure over many, many years. And what I tell my patients happens with our heart over many years when we've had high blood pressure, well, the heart's pumping against a higher pressure. So that means that it's under more stress when it's pumping, and what happens over time, the heart muscle is unable to relax completely. So the heart is able to pump out the blood, but when it relaxes, it's not relaxing fully. It's going, it stops. It's not relaxing fully. And that inability to relax means that the heart essentially becomes lazy and it starts causing fluid to build up fluid in the ankles, as I mentioned, in the feet, in our lungs, and we become short of breath. So heart failure is a common condition, either because your heart muscle isn't pumping strongly enough or because it's not relaxing properly. But whatever the cause, this class of medication has shown significant benefits, improved outcomes. You do better when you're on this class of medication than when you're not on this medication you are less likely to visit the hospital and go in with the exacerbation of your heart failure. So it has significant benefits. So again, if you have heart failure, even without diabetes, have a chat with your healthcare professional just to see whether this class of medicine might be appropriate for you in your particular circumstances. Beyond the diabetes, beyond the heart failure, this class of medicine has also been shown to improve kidney function and essentially protects the kidneys. If you have something called chronic kidney disease or CKD, whether it be because of diabetes or because of high blood pressure or because of infections or kidney problems, well then this class of medication has also been shown to protect the kidneys and essentially acts like a barrier or a shield 
to stop protein loss and actually stop and slow the progression of kidney decline. So it's a very, very useful class of medicine in that regard too. Another benefit I see in many of my patients is that they manage to lose some weight when they're on this class of medication. It's obviously a great story to have where when you lose weight, you get improvements in diabetes, improvements in blood pressure, and patients actually feel much, much better. And it does this by lowering your appetite. So many of my patients who are on this class of medication feel that their appetite is slightly lower than what it was before. And over time, they notice often a very significant weight reduction. Now, it's not an injectable treatment. It's not an ozempic. It's a tablet that is taken often once daily. And some of the names you might have heard of, known as empagliflozin or dapagliflozin, or the trade names Jardiance and Forsega, well, this class of medicine, as I said, has shown significant benefits, but the weight loss can be pretty dramatic and obviously very rewarding for patients. Now, what do you need to watch out for? And of course, the medicine is not for everybody, so always seek independent advice from your healthcare professional. But there are some risks risks that we warn our patients who start this medication and in particular the way they act essentially they cause you to lose sugar in the urine well then that can slightly increase the risk of urinary infections particularly rashes or thrush or general yeast infections because you've got a lot more sugar around the uh, the general areas then you've got to be careful about that and we would often stop the medication if an infection does occur there is a low but important risk of something called diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, that often happens in patients who have diabetes, particularly if they're unwell with an infection or a gastro illness. It's always important to go off the medicine for a few days and have a chat with your healthcare professional. If you're having a procedure, if you're having surgery, we often tell our patients to stop this medication for two to three days beforehand. So always check with your healthcare professional if you are planning to have surgery and you will likely have been instructed to go off this medication for a few days prior to surgery. But in essence, the medication is very, very useful. It's beyond just the diabetes. That's what I tell my patients. There are great benefits for those who have congestive heart failure with the additional benefits of protecting your kidneys, helping to reduce your appetite, and of course, helping with some weight loss. So hopefully you found that useful. Have a chat with your healthcare professional whether this class of medicine might be something that needs to be considered for you. And thanks for all the support of the channel. Until the next video, bye for now.